Today I have the M0610 Pro from Artisol, a pen tablet that has customized LEDs to inspire that artist within all of us. But how does the tablet perform? Well, we're going to go over that in a minute. I ain't getting out of bed today. I keep waking up from the previous night. Now, what's a pen tablet? A pen tablet is a device you place on your desk, connect it to your computer, you draw on the pen tablet itself while observing what you're drawing on an external display. In other words, it needs a host computer and a display for you to be able to use it properly. Now, I'm John, and when I'm not out saving the universe, I do tutorials and reviews on hardware and software that's used in the creative process. Now join me and remember who you were supposed to be by hitting that subscribe button, clicking that bell so you won't miss anything. We'll begin with the quick unboxing just to show you the contents and what it comes with. To start off, which is uncommon nowadays, is a nice felt velcro pen case holder. You can store your pen and all your nibs in here. Next you're going to have your USB-A to USB-C connector cable. The Artisol comes with two adapters, USB-C and micro USB to USB-A so that you can connect it to an Android device. We'll cover that later. There were two bag of nibs and a nib remover, so they're pretty generous with the amount of spare nibs they give you. A smudge guard glove, and finally the pen itself. The tablet is super thin and lightweight. It only features one USB-C port on the side for connectivity. And basically there you have it. There's your nice piece of kit right there. Setup is simple. To the left, the USB-A cable is going to go into your laptop or PC computer. The single USB-C connector is going to plug directly into the USB-C port on the actual pen tablet device. As mentioned, the M0610 Pro is a pen tablet. It is electromagnetic resonance, EMR for short. The tablet size is 10 by 6 inches, and it has an industry-leading 300 PPS report rate. That's basically how fast the mouse talks to the actual tablet itself. This should help the performance of high-speed pen strokes. It features three different light modes and seven shortcut keys. One key is available to cycle through those LED modes. Finally, there's a customizable quick dial, and we'll cover that in a sec. The M0610 Pro comes with the P58B digital pen. This is a battery-free EMR pen. Features 8,192 pressure levels and tilt supported at 60 degrees, but that's only supported on Mac OS. Now, this is one of the more unique pens I've tested. It's got two programmable buttons. And the pen tip does have some give to it, but it's not a mushy kind of give, it's more like a clicky kind of give. Both the top of the pen and the back of the pen are rounded all the way around. There's no eraser on the back, and I found the pen to be really lightweight. So I think this pen will be popular with people who don't really like hard edges or hard angles, you know, on their actual pen device. Now adjusting the color of the LED lights is really easy. The two express keys Below the dial are for manually changing the colors and adjusting the intensities of the colors and etc. The last express key is for cycling through the different lighting options. One is turning it off altogether, one is manual adjustment like we just mentioned, and the other it just kind of cycles through the different colors. Now I could see this being a hit, especially with a lot of the gamer guys now, right? We all have these RGB keyboards and you know I can see myself spending time here, you know, trying to sync this thing up to my different RGB profiles with my mouse and keyboard. Man, I really should get out more. Okay, going through the drivers. So real quick, this is the dashboard links to the website. The overview, this is information gathering only except for this button which shuts off the LEDs on or off. Fast access keys is where you're gonna program all your shortcut keys. Right here is the scroll dial, we're starting on there. It gives you two open slots in case you wanna add something besides zoom and etc. The hotkeys, you get seven of them. This last one is for LEDs only. And in addition, we have left and right-handed mode. And what's really nice is they've given you pre-configured shortcuts for some of the main ARC programs that are out there. I really appreciated that because I can never remember half the shortcut keys. In the pen settings, this is where we set up our buttons, test pressure, adjust the pressure curve, and make sure we have this Windows Ink enabled. WinTab is sort of getting deprecated now in these programs. Monitor mapping, if you have multiple monitors, you need to tell the tablet which monitor you're looking at. This down here, preference settings, is where you're going to go to configure your different profiles per application. Now basically how it works is you're going to configure your settings, save as, whatever the application name is, and then you're going to have to open up the driver to cycle through them if you open the program. Unfortunately, it doesn't map to the EXE. Maybe that's something we'll see later on added in the driver. The Android functionality works as it should. You'll use one of the included 
micro USB or USB-C to USB-A converters, the functionality works well. There's no configuration needed. You just open up your art app of choice. I chose Sketchbook Pro and you can see it just works. This gives the added functionality of pressure sensitivity using the Artisol tablet as long as it's sporting Android version 6.0 and older, which every Android device out there at this point should be. We'll move on to Windows. Uh, we're just starting to get some line quality tests. And what I'm really trying to do here is show that light, medium to uh, hard uh, brush strokes as far as pressure goes, because we're really looking to make sure we can get a decent gradient between the three. As you can see, the Artisol tablet does deliver those three different levels of gradient that I'm looking for. Moving on, I really want to make sure there's no pen lag. This is an EMR device after all, and that's something we have to look at. So these tests here are not really for line quality as much as they are speed of the pen to make sure what I'm seeing on screen is what's happening, you know, on the tablet itself as I move the pen back and forth at quicker speeds. Fortunately, even with cross hatching, I'm not noticing any lag in the lines. And since it's a pen tablet, I'm not noticing any kind of cursor drift either when I'm moving the pen back and forth. The next tests are for consistent pressure curves, meaning I'm drawing some lines out here to make sure I'm not noticing any kind of drop in pressure, uh, you know, from the beginning of the line, which starts light and then the end of the line. Now I did have to tweak the pressure curve in the driver as I'm shown here because I was getting a little bit of a dropout between the early part of the pressure, in other words, the light pressure, uh, going into medium where it was a little heavy handed, but a quick adjustment in the driver fixed all that. In fact, as you can see, after that slight tweak, I'm getting a really, really nice, even with pure black lines, gradient and consistent pressure curve without any artifacts on long, slow strokes. Even these quick circles, which I do to make sure we're not dropping out with alternate type of pen strokes look really good, you know, from beginning to end. And at the end of that circle, you could see once again, I'm able to drop back to a nice light stroke. Now tests are nice, but you want to see obviously how the tablet performs, you know, in a live drawing. And the good news is the M0610 tablet performs admirably, both in my pencil work and also some shading exercises that I tried out, meeting the gradients we sort of talked about. And that pencil work stuff is really important to me. I experimented with a bunch of different brushes and textures and such in Clip Studio Paint and overall had a great experience using the tablet. Now one thing I do have to mention, I did experience some issues with the driver. Not an installation necessarily, but some issues with stability such as it wasn't starting up with the computer, to which I just dragged out a shortcut to my desktop to remediate that, and some crashing I experienced when trying to cycle through the different lighting options. Now to Artisol's credit, when I spoke to them about the issues I was experiencing, they did send me a beta driver to test, which uh, did away with any of the crashing and the, the startup issues I was experiencing, but wasn't yet ready for prime time. In case anybody hasn't heard, there's this little issue of a pandemic going on. So I was really impressed, even with all that going on, the type of communication I experienced, both with the support people who had no idea who I was and the person I was dealing with my contact directly at Artisol. If you've watched my videos before, that type of customer service and support uh, is really important to me and helps when I'm doing these reviews, sort of root for these companies and, you know, give them the badge of approval, even if I've experienced some issues, you know, like I said, with the driver, sort of turning a negative into a positive, so to speak. That aside, what's critical is that I'm getting nice crisp lines. The inking and Clip Studio Paint using the standard G-Pen performed it expected. I had no problem getting the different line weights and effects and etc. as I'm shown here on the screen. The tablet overall was fun to use. So that's really the thing, right? You know, what's the experience with the tablet? Overall, I had a good experience. I like the company and I like the slogan. Now I get it's just marketing, but I'm saying as far as the personality goes of the company, I like it. I mentioned the communication and that's really important, but like any review, I like to point out some of the things I'd like to see improve. Now the M0610 Pro doesn't have some of the features of this more expensive competition, but they don't advertise that. I'm talking about things like wireless functionality and such. They do feature the Android stuff and that's becoming pretty common among these pen tablets. So some suggestions for improvement. I like to see a little bit more stability in that driver. Now, like I said, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. They did send me a beta one. So I'm expecting those couple of issues to be resolved when that driver goes live. Conversely, the tilt functionality only being a Mac function, 
I mean, if you're a Mac user, you don't really care, right? But some of the Windows users, they really like that functionality. And I can see that being a negative for some of those buyers when some of the other patent tablets may feature that. Hopefully we get to see that turned on, you know, maybe in a future driver update. So we'll be looking out for more future artist sold devices and hopefully we get an opportunity to do more reviews on this channel. On that note, if you would be so kind to drop a like down below, you folks be safe out there and I will check you out in the next one.